If there is one thing that all Zelda fans love, it's anniversaries. Cool merchandise, new events, new games, it's great. But sometimes it gets a little bit weird. And today we're gonna be covering that. From Zelda references in Mario games to weird amiibo, and even that one time Nintendo created a horde of angry German cosplayers. Today we're talking about the top five weirdest ways Nintendo has celebrated the Legend of Zelda series. Oh, <laughs> where are my manners? My name is the Bread Pirate. I respond to every comment and I make lots of Zelda content exactly like this. Let's begin. Although the Zelda series is turning 35 years old in 2021, it hasn't had many anniversaries. Well, okay, technically it has had lots of anniversaries. It's just that nobody celebrated them. It wasn't until 2011 that Zelda celebrated its first anniversary on the 25th birthday of the series, the same year that Skyward Sword came out. In fact, there's a reference within Skyward Sword to the 25th anniversary. Before the wing ceremony begins, Olan explains, Today is a special day for many reasons, but it is also the 25th anniversary of our fine institution. But this was not the only reference Nintendo made to the 25th anniversary within their games. In Super Mario 3D Land, released the same year, there is a major easter egg in honor of the Zelda franchise's birthday. In World 5 Level 2, which is the number 25 backwards, there is an entire level with a top-down camera angle that has you go through a maze of enemies and booby traps, a clear reference to the top-down formula that was originally used in Zelda 1 and has become a staple of the franchise ever since. Numero 4 -o. The astute among you will notice that most of the picks on this list come from the 25th anniversary. Nintendo has only celebrated two Zelda anniversaries after all, the 25th and the 30th. But to be honest, the 30th anniversary of the series wasn't very interesting. We didn't even get a new game that year. I'm sorry, Twilight Princess, I love you, but a $60 version of the game that I already bought for $20 on the Wii is not a great way of celebrating. However, there is one part of the 30th anniversary worth mentioning, and that was the Amiibo. Four Amiibo were released for the celebration, Ocarina of Time Link, Wind Waker Link, Wind Waker Zelda, and my personal favorite, Pixel Link. If you look at him directly from the side or directly from the front, it looks pretty normal. But look at it from a diagonal angle and things begin to look a little bit strange, even the nose is a little bit off. Something most people don't realize about this amiibo is that it has a sword on its back too. Hypothetically, this is based on the white sword from the original game, but to be honest, it looks more like something from Minecraft. At number three. In case you didn't know, there have been a lot of Zelda manga and comics, more than 20 according to the Zelda Gamepedia. And one of these comics was made specifically for the 25th anniversary. In the fall of 2011, Nintendo commissioned Penny Arcade, a webcomic company, to make a comic for the celebration. And Penny Arcade delivered with a grand total of five pages. Yeah, um, that, that was it. Furthermore, the story is not told from the perspective of Link, or Zelda, or Impa, or even Groose. It's actually told from the perspective of the headmaster Gabora, with the story revolving around him lamenting about sending Link to save his daughter. But like I said, it's only five pages long, so it feels more like a poem than it does a full-fledged story. Despite this, I think it's pretty good. You can read it right now for free if you'd like. There's a link in the description below. Number two. During the 25th anniversary celebrations, Nintendo launched an anniversary website. It had the history of the games, free wallpapers for your desktop, and details about the 25th anniversary symphony. But for me, the most fascinating part of the website was the Zelda Flipnote Contest. What is a Flipnote? I'm glad you asked. It's a free DSi animation software. In fact, you can still download it as of 2021. The contest for it was very simple. Make a Zelda animation, submit it to Nintendo, and if it's good, then it'll get put on the anniversary website. Apparently, some of the judges were Zelda developers themselves, such as Miyamoto. You could compete in one of three regions depending on where you lived. North America, Oceania and Europe, or Japan. There were multiple winners per each region, and the general consensus is that the Japanese winners were the better animators overall. However, I would argue that the North American, European, and Oceanian contestants still did a great job. If you'd like, I am also adding this into the description below so you could check it out later. Okay, this might have not made it onto the list, but I think we can all agree it's quite weird. Once again, for the 25th anniversary, Nintendo put together a series of montages on YouTube celebrating all the key elements of the Zelda series. For instance, music, secrets, romance, with a question mark, and wisdom. But my personal favorite is 25 years of races. Let's take a look, shall we? Gorons, Rito, 
Ugh, Sabrosians. Animals? Did, 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 he, did these count? Townspeople? Y you mean Helians? Pirates? Why in the world? Actually, I'm fine with this. It's clear that these videos were thrown together without the Zelda team's supervision. They're missing information and the editing is lazy. But even if it's embarrassing on Nintendo's part, it's still fun to look back on. And so we come to number one. During a GamesCon convention in Cologne, Germany, Nintendo organized a cosplay flash mob where the first 111 people to show up in Zelda attire would receive a free goodie bag, a limited edition t-shirt, and a can of Deku Nuts. No, I am not making that up. That's a real thing. It was a can of acacia seeds, not for eating, but for planting. Originally, these Deku cans were promotional material for people who pre-ordered Ocarina of Time 3D in Greece, but for some unknown reason, they made their way into Germany specifically for this celebration. How does Nintendo get away with calling this merchandise? Anyways, we know for a fact there were more than 111 people in that flash mob, and everybody after 111 got nothing. Not a single Deku nut. Understandably, this spawned a horde of angry German cosplayers. According to one cosplayer at the event, we were taken by surprise at first. Wait a minute, there's still a lot of t-shirts left, they said, but Nintendo left its fans in the rain and cleaned up without a word. We were only indicated with a few gestures that it would now be over and that we should leave the stage stairs. Outrage spread. Thankfully, the Zelda community is one of the friendliest communities I know of, so the outrage didn't lead to anything. But what are we supposed to expect? Everybody wants Deku Nuts! We are not done, though. At the same event in Germany, Nintendo also hosted a Zelda trivia quiz. It went like this. To qualify, you had to catch a ruby plushie that was thrown into the crowd. After that, you got to participate in the quiz itself. If you won, you received an extremely rare Golden Twilight Princess statue. If you got second place, then you got a Zelda chest containing various goodies. And in third place, you got a similar chest, but slightly smaller. Miraculously, we know who won this contest. The winner was a guy named Martigen, and we know this because after he won the quiz, him and his wife, Tawny, reached out to the North Castle forums and gave them pictures of all the merchandise they won. And even though me or you will never have another chance to get all that cool merchandise, we can at least have the next best thing. Subscribing to the channel! That's probably way better than a can of Deku Nuts, uh, right? Well, that concludes everything for today's episode. Was there anything that surprised you? Let us know! And until I see you next time, have fun storming the castle!